Good morning, sports fans. Welcome to the channel. My name is Saad Shah. I'm a motion graphics designer from Chicago, and this channel is dedicated to all things DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So if you're new to Fusion and you're looking to pick up some tips and tricks on how to get started and how to get your projects done quickly, these videos might be helpful to you. So if that sounds good to you, let's jump right in. Okay, here we go. Fusion quick tips. Tip number one, the mother of all tips. The, I, I can't recommend this more. Select tool shortcut. Shift, spacebar, like a boss. So you can right click on your flow area and you can click on add tool and then you can choose one of these. So let's say you're adding a background. That's a pretty lengthy process. Uh, you can also go to Effects Library, drop down Tool, and then Background or whatever it is. A lot of clicking around and screwing around. And then there's another method, which is this uh, default Fusion Toolbar. If you click on Fusion here, it'll show you um, Alt-T to toggle it on and off. And you can use this uh, to add tools as well. The reason I don't recommend this is because A, it takes up space in your screen, so you're losing screen real estate, and two, it doesn't have all the nodes on it, it just has a few. So you're gonna use this when you're accessing a tool that's on here, and then you'll have to use another method when the tool is not there. So why deal with all that? Let's just get rid of it. Alt-T, use it when you're just starting out and you must have something like a training wheel, but then once you start getting more familiar with tools and, and bringing up nodes, uh, use the shift uh, spacebar shortcut and this will save you a ton of time. Tip number two, view scaling and zooming. Basic stuff, but you need to know this if you don't already. Control F is what's gonna make this composition fit your viewer. So right here, left-hand corner, all the way at the top, you've got some some zooming um, options here. By default, you'll have this at, at fit. If it's not, you can hit Control F to bring it to the fit version. And the good thing about this is that when it's on fit, it's going to resize as you resize the viewer itself. So that's cool. Now, if you wanna see the actual size of the composition, hit Control 1. There we go. So control one is going to show you your composition at 100% no scaling in or out. The thing to remember about this is that when you change the size of the viewer, this is not going to expand or contract with that. It's gonna stay at 100%. Next, zooming in with the plus sign, that's on the number pad on your keyboard. So you could do that, I'll show you. So here we go. And then you can hit the minus button as well to bring it down. Another way to do it is to hold down the control key and then you can use the middle mouse scroll to zoom in and out. Now, what if you wanted to see this full page, like full screen? I'm not sure if DaVinci Resolve Fusion uh, has that option. Uh, what usually I will do is go to the edit page and then you could just hit control F and that will give you the full screen view. Hit F again to get out of it. Alternatively, you can go to uh, the color page as well. And whatever you're working on, if you hit Control F, that also gives you a full page view. Now, one thing to remember is that if you click on this viewer area right up top here, and then you hit Control F, this is going to work. If you click on the flow area and hit Control F, it's gonna do something else. It's gonna actually work with the tool finder option here. So that's how that works. Tip number three, double viewers. There are unlimited viewers in Fusion when you're working. Most of the time you're going to work with one viewer. But what I recommend you do is use two viewers and I'm gonna show you how uh, that works. So up here, there is this icon for the viewer, and there is another one over here. And this is a, a single viewer toggle. So if you click on that, just that one is singled out. And then if you hit the double, 
then you get the two. What normally you would do is you would put your, your final node or whatever node you have towards the end of your composition or towards the top of your composition, if you're coming from a layer-based uh, environment, you would view in the second viewer or one of them. And then whatever you're working on would be in the, the other viewer. So I'll give you an example. Let's turn off all the viewers. Now let's take this output and put it in this viewer. So this is my final. And then let's say I'm working on the logo. So that can go in here. So as I'm working, I can move this around and whatnot. And this will reflect in the second viewer, which is your final. So your final is going to show you how things are going to affect the composition. And uh, the one on the left is going to be more sort of utility view where you're actually working. So that's uh, that's the the way that you would set up your two viewers. Tip number four, view indicators. What are these? These are the two little dots. The view indicators are these two little dots uh, that you see underneath a node. And they are meant to indicate where they're being viewed. So if you look at my flow here, M1 is being viewed in the left viewer which would be this, and the output one is going to be viewed in the right side. So that's what the purpose of that is. If you want to view a node in any viewer, use the one key or the two key to put them up here. Let's take the background and let's say we want to put it in the viewer number one. So you would hit one, and this is the faster method of putting your nodes into these viewers. The reason I mention this is because there's much slower methods of doing the same thing. So if, you're, if you catch yourself doing that, you can save a lot of time. So the first one, which is not too bad, is a lot of times people will grab a node and throw it up there, just like that. This is called the node drag method uses the mouse. Um, the reason I don't like it is because as you're dragging it up, your, your pipes are getting all over the place. Using the keyboard is way faster. And there's a, another method which is ridiculously slow and inefficient, uh, and I'm going to point this out to you. The view indicator button itself can be clicked on. So if you're really trying to take as long as you can to complete a project, go ahead, take your mouse and click on that little button and zoom in and, and do it that way. It's going to waste a lot of your time. Trust me, you don't want to do that. Now, let me show you a couple of bonus tips. If you don't see view indicators uh, underneath your, your nodes, how do you know which one, which node is going where, right? So you just hover your mouse pointer right on top of your node, and it's going to reveal view indicators for you. Also, notice that I have two buttons here, two view indicators. These can be three, four, or even more. Actually, they go up to nine. And this represents how many viewers you have on your system or how many displays you have on your system and so on. So if you have floating windows or if you have an external television attached to your system and so on, you will see more of these dots. And the same concept will apply. You can change between them with one, two, three, four, and so on. Another way to view a node in a particular viewer, let's say you want to see this merge coming down from the, the logo in the first one. Instead of dragging it there, you can go to the inspector if you have it open. And this is called the... Uh, nodes content header right here. So you can just grab that and throw it up there. So that works as well. Again, I'm not a big fan of it. I will use it occasionally if I'm going to solo one of the, the nodes in my viewers or not, but you can do it like that too if you want. Here's a bonus tip for you. If you grab a file, an image file from your file browser and you bring it in here, it's going to make a node, right? The media in node, and it's going to connect to that. Well, what if you just want to preview it? Just grab the file and drop it into your uh, viewer. And voila, now you have a preview. And lastly, if you want to clear your viewers, uh, instead of going and hunting down which node is being displayed where and turning it off, you can just hit the tilde key 
and that will clear all your viewers. The page navigation is this huge area on the bottom that shows you which page you're on and how to switch between them. You can turn this off and save a lot of space on your computer, especially if you're working with a laptop or a smaller screen. So go here and hit show page navigation, just that'll turn it off. Now, anytime you wanna to go to Fusion, you hit shift five, which is this. Edit is shift four, which is this. Color is shift six, which is this, and so on. So if you just memorize the page navigation uh, keyboard commands, uh, you're never going to lose all that area that you normally would uh, if you were using that. So go, let's go ahead and see if we can learn all these. Right here on the screen, you can see Shift 2, Media Page, Cut Page, Edit is 4, Fusion is 5, Deliver is 8, and so on. And there's a, there's a couple more as well I'm going to show you. Let's go back to Fusion. And then if you hit Shift 1, That'll bring up the project manager, which is pretty cool. And you can also hit Shift-9, uh, which I use all the time, which is the project settings. So you don't have to hunt down that little cogwheel on the bottom that you lose when you turn that off. Tip number six, the two-handed scroll bar. Underneath your viewer, you have this time ruler, right? And it has uh, these frame numbers that, that are being shown. Underneath that, you have the transport controls right here where the play button is. On the left side, you have these two numbers. This is the global range of your composition overall. And right now it's showing in frames. I animate in frames, but you can also change this in the, pre the preferences to um, feet of film or uh, SMPTE uh, time codes as well. And if you look at the right side right here, you see another, another number. That is the current frame that you're on. So you can, you can go ahead and you can change the uh, number right here. Now, the, the interesting part, the pro tip right here, is these yellow bars, right? And this is how you can work on a section of your animation instead of the whole thing. So let's say the whole animation has been done, and then now you're just fine-tuning a section between frame 100 to frame 140. And then underneath this is what you call a two-handed scroll bar, and this is going to allow you to zoom in so you can see all your frames. So let's do that. And you can zoom right in like that. And now you can play your animation and you can loop it in this little section. Pretty nifty. Now remember, the user-defined render range, the render start and render time, is also used for playback, for disk caching, for previews, and for final renders. Last but not least, tip number seven, how to save an image from your composition. So if you're using a composition and you're at a particular frame that you need to save as a thumbnail or as a JPEG image, what you would do is click on, uh, right click on the composition and go to save image. And when you do that, you can choose a uh, bitmap, JPEG, and other formats uh, for files as well. And that's how you would save an image. Well, that's it for today. I hope you learned something new. I'm going to keep these videos nice and short, um, aimed at the beginner, so we can welcome more people into the Fusion community. Uh, happy compositing, and I will see you next week. Bye.